the average home, like ours, might have a 100 amp panel, and you're thinking, you just can't electrify your home. A panel like this one, for example, is 100 amps, and we already added demand management for our EVs. I wanted to do more. I wanted to get rid of gas in our home, and I wanted to completely electrify our home. But we only have a 100 amp panel, and I didn't want to get rid of the 100 amp panel. But isn't this the best source of heat for heating your home? But I'm here to show you there is a better way, and you can do it on a 100 amp panel, and you don't need gas. How? Heat pumps, heat pumps, more heat pumps, solar, a lot of solar, and demand management. And you can get there too. Before we get into the upgrades, let's talk about where we started. Our home is a 1200 square foot by level with an additional 1100 square foot basement, so about 2300 square feet of conditioned space. Our home was built in about 2002 and it used to run on gas. That's what it looks like after gas is gone. But before you do all this, there is absolutely something you have to do. You need to get an energy audit. This is crucial. To find out how much your heat load is for your home. Our home had a 27,000 BTU an hour heat load, or thereabouts, about 8 kilowatts. You have to choose a heating system that can keep up with that heat load at design temperatures. For example, our 99% design temperature here in Calgary is approximately minus 26 degrees Celsius or close to minus 15 Fahrenheit. This is important because heat pumps lose heating output the colder it goes. Doing a heat load calculation involves looking at insulation in the attic, in the walls, your doors and windows, in the foundation, and air changes per hour based on a blower door test like this one. So the blower is blowing air which direction? Sucking the air out of the house. So we'll be drawing the outside air in through the cracks and crevices and uh, taking eight different readings at different uh, pressure readings and applying that to the heated volume of the house. That's literally just money getting sucked out of our house. You can actually feel the air coming through. Now, when you're getting an energy audit, you are going to find out that it's a little difficult to get quotes to go all electric. You're going to be able to get a heat pump, a cold climate heat pump, a heat hybrid heat pump, water heater, no problem. But when you're trying to get all electric, no gas, that's difficult because most of these contractors are trying to do gas as your backup auxiliary heat. We ended up going with Comfort Union because they were willing not only to go forward with an all-electric installation, they were actually excited to do it, especially Asif. And this is what, like probably two decades old? Yes. Uh, and we're replacing this with the hybrid water heater, Cybol Ultron Xlora 220E, runs on 15 amps. And uh, we'll be replacing this uh, old furnace with air, a Gree Air Handler unit. Yes. And it comes with a wrapper coil inside and we'll be putting um, a resistant heater, which is eight kilowatt, yep. uh, based on the heat uh, heat loss in the house. Uh, and we're getting rid of uh, all this gas work right here. Uh, we will be removing all this chimney and capping it on the top. And uh, also some of just the condensate uh, that it's flexible, we'll put a, a PVC piping, we'll remove the uh, old one inch filter rack with uh, Honeywell F100. It has the least amount of uh, pressure drop, which is good for, you know, uh, ventilation and whatnot instead of choking the system. Uh, so we'll do that there. And humidifier, uh, we'll go with uh, general layer. Let's make it really, really pretty. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> one thing about uh, HVAC work is that you want to do it the right way the first time. The repeat work is very costly and it's, it's a pain for us, pain for customers, everybody. And that's uh, why we're going electric all in. Yes, right all away. in the right way. 
And uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, we'll see what it looks like in two days. And we're really excited to be here working with Ryan. And yeah, hopefully this becomes a, a, you know, a landmark project and inspiration for a lot of homeowners in Calgary and around Alberta. So exactly. Uh, very, I very hope excited. so too. I yeah, hope so very too. Very excited. Thank and you. I'm joined with my dad here. Uh, he's a red steel journeyman and professional engineer. Uh, done HVAC for the last 30 years. And uh, he'll be leading the whole project today with us. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you Mohammed. Yeah. So I'm about to show you where the cold climate heat pump was mounted. Something to note, if you do mount it on your foundation wall, you may get some vibration, some low hum, and you may need to add more insulation on the arms so that it doesn't hum as much. I am hoping to fix this uh, this summer. We were able to use the original gap of the uh, dryer vent. Uh, remember, we don't have a dryer vent anymore, so we have less air going in and out of the house. Here's the heat pump up and running. And I will say one thing, it did take a couple days to get this up and running and our house to get warm. So if you're going to do this when it's getting colder, make sure that you have some space heaters to keep yourself warm. Also make sure that the insulation on the lines in a cold climate is all the way into the machine. That's very important. Th uh, special thanks to my friend Yvonne for helping me figure that out and uh, coordinating that with uh, Comfort Union as well. Here's the finished product, the air handler, the heat pump water heater. Also a uh, finding that we had uh, later on in the project was that the heat strip didn't work well if it was on the same breaker as the air handler itself. And this had something to do with the demand management system what, that I'm about to show you. This is a dual channel demand management system from V Electric Power. It is monitoring the heat strip as the highest priority and the EVSC as the second highest priority. If our EV charging puts us over the 80% limit, or 80 amps in this case, it will shut down the relay to the EVSE. Let's say we have the double oven on, the cold climate heat pump on, the heat pump water heater on, well, pretty much everything. It will likely trip the relay for the heat strip as well, and it will turn it off, and, and you'll see from the screenshot that the demand manager will wait on a timer to see if it can turn the two channels on again. Here comes Level Up Solar to install 14.4 kilowatts of solar power. This is a solar splitter meter base. This lets you uh, actually get more solar than your 100 amp panel might allow for. The order I've shown you this whole project is the order you have to do this in. So make sure you get an energy audit first, then do your HVAC work then do solar and this is so you can get a hundred percent annual offset solar panel system now you pretty much have to have a hundred percent offset or as close as possible so that the numbers start making financial sense and i can't say enough good things about uh, level up solar and how much they helped me through this project and I've left a Google review. And if you want any help and you're in Calgary, uh, please reach out. I will uh, do my best to help you get uh, some other quotes as well. Um, I've started to uh, make some additional connections and I can pretty much guarantee that I can help you to also go electric, 100% electric. Now getting back to the 100% annual offset. If you get close to 100% and you electrify more, that means that you will use more electricity in the winter at a fairly low rate, 10 cents a kilowatt hour or less. Right now it's less. And you will be paying about 7 cents in per kilowatt hour in transmission and distribution charges. So you also need to ensure that you're using your solar. So basically charging a vehicle or 
doing your dishes or doing your laundry, trying to do that as much as possible during sun hours. If you do that, you won't be paying transmission and distribution charges when you're using the sun. What will happen though in the summer is you'll join a solar club and I can help with that as well. When you join the solar club and you switch to the summer rate, the rate where you're getting approximately 30 cents a kilowatt hour, at least right now, and you get that in the summer for excess solar generation. So here's the deal. More electricity means more solar. You use more electricity in the winter and you generate more electricity in the summer. It's not that hard, but if you start thinking about it, if you get <clears throat> less electricity usage, you get less solar. In the summer, when there is excess generation, you are selling that for approximately 30 cents a kilowatt hour here in Alberta with Solar Club. And then in winter, you're paying something close to 10 cents a kilowatt hour or less right now. We did also get the Greener Homes loan. So basically, the idea is that we're replacing our energy bills with that loan. And then with all of the offsets with the solar credits, you end up having almost no electricity bill, no heating bill. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, please subscribe and keep watching because I'll be releasing more videos. And if you need any help, uh, just comment.